Hello there everybody, and welcome back to Space Engineers. It's an absolute pleasure to make your acquaintance once again. Welcome back to the third episode of our indubitable rover quest. That's right, we are we are on the way, man. We are making moves right now, let me tell you. Last time we managed to put together this base. Well, actually, last time we managed to trek over to a trading station, buy a tier 3 hand drill, uh, walk over here, build up this platform, and then forget to record it. So I just did a little bit of an outro for it. This time, we are not going to make these mistakes. This time, we are actually going to play the game. I know. I know. It's incredible, isn't it? Now, this rover turned out to be a little bit of a dud. My plan with the top rotor over there did not really work out, unfortunately. And so we are a little bit SOL when it comes to uh, building large grid blocks on this rover. So instead, we need to pivot and start doing something a bit more effective. We are going to grab a text panel, which is the ones that fit well on these small grid blocks. And we are going to put down this one right there because I need a checklist. I don't function very well without one. I need a checklist. So now I should be able to say text and images, and then I should be able to say edit text. Okay, there we go. All right, so we got the to-do list once again, and then down here, we'll have the to-done list. All right, step one is going to be to mine up some stone. We need at least enough iron to build the wheels on this one, which is gonna be a little bit rough, right? But before we worry about the wheels, we are going to need to build the small assembler, the basic assembler, I think it's what it's called. And we're going to need to build the basic refinery. We're then going to need a bit of power for the MCV. So power the MCV. That's what I'm going to be calling that guy, by the way, the mobile construction vehicle. Let me know what you come up with. And then we're going to want to build a mining uh, arm. That's right. That's so the first thing the MCV is going to do is produce its own uh, materials so that we uh, we've got a little bit of work to do here. There we go. So mine up and stone, build the basic assembler. Uh, that's not right. That's right. And then build the basic refinery, power the MCV, and build a mining arm. We're also going to need to design the cockpit. There's quite a few things here. Life support. That's going to be rough. The living space. You know what? Part of the power of the MCV is actually going to be some subtasks here. We're going to need power generation and storage. And then of course the ever-present task of greeble. 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 All right, so step one, stone. I know how to do that. Never mind. Also, fun discovery. Uh, if you mine dirt, it will give you organic, which is the stuff we poop out. So it turns out we aren't so different from the planet after all. While I'm digging down here in the deeps, this is a perfect opportunity to thank the channel members once again for their incredible support in keeping this entire series running, and to thank all of you, the wonderful viewers who spend your time watching these videos. We appreciate you both equally, genuinely. Thank you so much. For the channel members, a reminder that there is a bunch of exclusive content out there. If you'd like to see it, it's totally yours. There's a fun Space Engineers blooper reel from Magic and I where we were trying out a piracy duo run that just... Man, it just evolved into complete chaos, so if you'd like to see some action with this room himself, there's plenty of it right over there. Ah, uh, seagulls are eating my <laughs> Not fun, <laughs> seagulls. Just stop it now. We also had a really fun series of uh, sort of like early expose reels for um, the upcoming RimWorld video. And by a fun series of which, I mean a single video. I don't know why that was the particular noun my brain fed me, but... Hey man, I just work here. Speaking of fun series though, we do actually have a fun series of videos over on the second channel. That's right, Largely Live. If you haven't seen it yet, please check it out. You'll find it in the description of all videos going forward. It is where Magic and I are going to be uploading longer Let's Play style content. So less of the sort of super edited stuff we do here and more significantly um, like longer, less edited, but still we hope high quality content for you guys to enjoy. So. You know, videos in the 45 minute to an hour and a half range. Uh, we're Right now we're doing a Tarkov Let's Play with um, Deadpine FPS, who is a phenomenal content creator. He primarily streams on Twitch. You can uh, check out those videos to find links to his description, uh, links to his video in its description. It will not link you to his description. Uh, that would be quite an impressive feat if we managed to pull that off. 
Thank you, by the way, again, for all the well wishes in episode one. This is, I know it's all we're all over the place here. I'm, I'm recording this when I have time at the moment. Uh, but I am feeling a lot better. The flu has finally decided to leave my body. There's a little bit of it left. Um, I think the oncoming corona infection has decided to... Uh, they're finding it out in the marketplace of ideas. We'll see which one of them <laughs> raids supreme. <laughs> uh, it never ends, baby. Alright, bunch of stone currently processing, which means I think it's time to start looking at this lad again. So, I, like I said, we have a rough plan, we have a rough blueprint. Magic, pull it up, the, uh, the old paint sheet there. I know I want to get the basic assembler and refinery running first. I need it to, in order to make the large and small steel tubes we need to make everything else. So, let's build that. Let's build some ass. Basic assembler, there we go. So basic assembler is a dead end block. It's only got one sort of one input point. I'm gonna stick that right over there. Let's go ahead and start grabbing some of the supplies for it. Let's just grab that. Did not manage to grab that somehow. You gonna tell me that displays are too large? Yes, you are. Ah, what the hell? Ah, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Uh, uh, Lassie, please. Lassie, Lassie, no, no, good girl, good girl. Don't do it. Don't, okay, chat, uh, look away. Look away, everybody. No, I'm sorry. Just run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Uh, hold on. Did we just... Did we just become best friends? Sorry, I'm actually a little bit speechless. This is such a cool shot. Hey, boy. How you doing? Sorry I had to shoot you with the BB gun. I hope you're doing okay. Oh, look at that. Look at that. I will name you Kevin, and you shall be my best friend. All right, Kev, don't go anywhere. Immediately sidetrack. All right, cool. Ding, ding. First piece of the puzzle done. We have a basic assembler. Now, we need to power it, uh, so give me a wind turbine. It's a little bit out of order from what we described, but this is kind of how we'll have to do it, because this ain't going to do much without juice. And I'm just going to stick that right on top of it for the moment. We will have to move this. Look at that. We have access to power. Oh, that's a good feeling. Okay, so now we want to build the basic refinery, which is this guy over here. The basic refinery is going to allow us... I don't think there's a connect on the bottom, right? No. Okay, so the basic refinery is going to allow us to refine iron ore directly. So we don't have to dig up stone as much anymore. It's just way more efficient. So for now, that's just going to go... I'm not a huge fan of the placement on that. And then, you know what? This would be a good, pretty, pretty good place to put a battery, though. Wouldn't it? Like, right there? That would work. That would work. All right, but perfect. There we go. Basic refinery up and running. All right, on episode three. Man, we we'll call that a speed run, huh? So now I should be able to throw this in there, and you'll see we'll get much better ratios from the stone than we do in the survival kit, which is just fantastic. Uh, that also means that we can now produce... Uh, block. So basic assembler, I want you to make me 20 power cells. Is that right? 80 power cells. I need you to make me 80 power cells. Okay, what do we need for that? So let's see what we need to get. Iron, silicon, nickel. Okay. We now have a goal. Let's get a couple loads of stone and then we'll worry about all that. Why am I building the battery first? Excellent question. The reason is simple. I want to have the wind turbine charging the battery when I'm not using those things. It's going to take quite a while to get everything going anyway, so the sooner we get it started, the better. Now, the further you build wind turbines away from their production point, so like if I built this six tiles up, it would get significantly more power, so that's probably something I'm going to want to do pretty soon as well. Take me to the iron. There we go. It should be pretty shallow. It usually is. This is going to be the most important thing. Okay, using right-click to drill straight down in large chunks without producing ore. And we just go straight down for that iron deposit. Okay, we're into the rock. And there it is. Nice, rusty hematite. So previously, a couple thousand stone gave us maybe like, maybe like 150 iron bars. Now, you'll see, 2,000, 3,000 iron is going to give us like a thousand iron bars. It's way more efficient to just do it directly like this. Now, we don't need much nickel ore. In fact, I think probably just one one hand load here is going to be plenty for all the stuff we need to do right now. But I'll do one of this for the nickel and one of these for the cobalt as well. And again, a single load of cobalt will probably be all we need for a while. But there we go. Okay, we are producing all of that. So we are definitely what we're going to be showering now is the silicon, which is just going to be gotten from stone. 
Uh, there was that boulder over there. That's probably worth checking just to make sure it isn't a silicon boulder. So the boulders in Space Engineers, these ones up here on the cliffs, will always have a random resource inside them. Uh, well, we might get lucky. It's silicon. Hey, look at that. Okay, cool. It's, it's a pretty common one. So it was a, it was, it's usually silicon or iron. You'll occasionally get like super lucky and it'll be platinum or, or uh, gold. Although I don't think platinum can spawn on the big planets anymore. I think it's um, only on the moon and asteroids. Now, the nice thing about batteries in this game is that building them actually gives you power because they spawn in with, I think it's like 30% uh, battery storage ready to go. It's kind of amazing. Uh, I'm going to turn off the... Yeah, we're going to have to be a little bit careful with our power here. I'm going to turn off the basic refinery so that the basic assembler can just work because uh, we've got enough resources now. We kind of just need to turn them into useful components. There we go. Our first battery is getting welded up. Fantastic. And you know what I'm realizing here? That did give me back my power cells. Yeah, I was a bit worried about that. Uh, what I'm realizing here is that I actually want to pick all this up um, before I weld it functional, because then I will the power cells will not belong to me anymore. Oh, no! I destroyed them. Ah, damn it. I'm going to put the battery down here. So I want to put the battery in here, rather, because then at least it's caged. It's protected. And we're going to have to build all those power cells again. That's That's a rookie mistake. That's my bad. The reason I got the first batch back and not the other is because the first batch was given back to me when I uh, took the other components out of it. It will fill up your inventory with whatever it can. So the best way to get power cells out of a battery without destroying them before you welded it is you've got to like put the computers back in, for example. And then when you grind the computers back out, it will give you all the power cells to fill your inventory. Um, okay, well, hey, lesson learned. It was a good teaching moment. All right, well, while this thing is doing that, I'm going to go grab a little bit more iron. We are going to need so much of it to build all this. Where was my hole? There it is. Okay, I'm going to have to drop the iron rock over there so I can clear my inventory so I can build this so I can... Hold on, there's a few steps involved here. So I can build this. We have the power cell. There we go. Okay, battery's up. Which means now I can... I can turn on the refinery so we can clear space so that I can put that iron away. Oh, lots of steps. Okay, turn the block back on. Okay, now we should have enough power output, including the... Uh, including the... Battery that this can just run without supervision. Yeah, look how quickly we process that stone. Amazing. And we should move this wind turbine further up. This is completely temporary. We will be popping this off. This is just why we're getting this bootstrap going. Okay, perfect. There we go. So that should be providing significantly more power now. Uh, I didn't even check what it was. It's now at 420 watts. If I put one down here, a little bit of an experiment for you here. All right, so this wind turbine now, let's see how much power it produces. So Turbine 2 is doing 430-ish watts. This one's doing 321. So there is definitely a massive advantage to building these higher up. So I think you want them six blocks away from each other. I think that's the sweet spot. So let's do... Uh, we'll pop one up here. This is mostly just to help the batteries continue charging. Oh, my solar panel actually just... Uh, wow, this, this, this truck just blanked out on power. Next priority is to turn on this hydrogen engine. All right, there we go. We got all the components we need to turn this engine on. And hopefully that means that our power will stabilize. And it sounds like, yes, indeed, it is running. Oh, perfect. The V4, baby. The V4. I mean, we could push this up and make that a V8. I think I know what I'm doing. All right, but we can update this. So we have built the basic assembler. Check. We have built the basic refinery. Check. We have mined up some stone, I'd say. Check, check, check. We have built power uh, generation and storage for the MCV. All right, so that can all get checked off. And that's all temporary, right? Like, that's that's the initial stuff. We're going to put that in the to-done list just to feel like we've done something. Next up, I think we're going to go for the cockpit. I think that's going to be the next big part. Uh, we're also going to need to uh, weld the base. That's probably the next major step forward. But before we do all that, let's get another hydrogen engine up on here. And voila, V8, baby. Oh, yeah. Okay, very nice. Now, we are going to have to pull all that off and move it around later because I need to refactor this ship or this rover in its entirety. It's This is not the way, let me tell you. But that's a pretty good start, though. Oh, look at the solar panels in full sunlight. It's all coming together. All right, I'm going to sit in here for a second, and we're actually going to move a little bit closer. First things first, is Kevin okay? 
Uh, Kevin has decided to visit his ancestors and despawned. Okay. Good stuff, Kevin. Uh, thanks for swinging by. We'll we'll see you in another life, brother. So a little bit slippery these days. I don't know what that's about. But, uh, oh god, very slippery. But I just want to roll this a little bit closer. In fact, I'm going to put it up here now. Uh-huh. And then I think we want to build a little ramp going up, because I keep running out of hydrogen. Just a bit of a pain. We do have all this ice right next to us, but it's still just a bit of a hassle. All right, so now I think the plan is to go, go gadget time lapse, and we're going to weld up every single piece of this. Uh, it's going to require a lot of running back and forth with iron deliveries and a lot of collecting steel plates, but I think it's necessary. The first thing we're going to weld up is the wheels for sure, but how are we doing for energy? Fully recharged in six hours. Okay, so it is actually charging. And that's with the refinery running. Cool, so we are we are net positive on power and it's not dependent on the time of day, which is awesome. Right, so I'm going to go around and we're gonna think the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get the wheels done. So we're gonna we're gonna grab this, we're gonna grab this, 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 this. Alright, and we're gonna put those into production. A lot of steel. That's a lot of iron, man. We need eight thousand iron. We have one thousand iron. I sense a disparity coming. All right, well, if you need me, you know where I'll be. Uh, off to the iron mines, I guess. Also, my uh, food and water seems to have bugged out at 34, 34, 45. Don't know what that's about. It's it's just not moving. Uh, let me go and grab some chow. Or maybe, maybe I can poke it with this. Uh, that's fixing up my health, something fierce, which is nice. But yeah, it doesn't... Oh, oh it, it said infinite for a second. I think, yeah, I think there's just a bug. Yeah, like we just consumed a whole bunch and the meters didn't move. So I'm gonna assume that the UI is busted. The final piece of the puzzle before we actually switch over to the time-lapse and then just sort of speed run the actual welding part of this design is going to be to put down a, I think a cargo container. I think that's a must have at this point. We probably should go large right away. I'm just trying to work out where it would fit. I'm thinking, call me crazy. Just do not call me twice, but I'm thinking we build it right there. That still allows us to move through, allows us to move around. Yeah. Yeah. So you know what? Forget all this. We clear the production queue. We got to build that first and the connectors for it. Four to six days later. And voila, look at that. We've got a large cargo container. Man, that's a, that's a good place to be, let me tell you. Okay, so we just grab this to finish off the last few pieces. I just want to get this thing 100% built up. There we go. All the bits and pieces now currently welded in. So now we need to run plumbing to connect this thing up to the side here. And I'm trying to work out what the best way for me to do that is. Um, we need to move these is the simple answer here. We need to move over to the large grid refinery. So if I get the refinery, we can get the industrial refinery, which is this one here. I like this one because it's got the, it's from the, the modded segment of uh, Space Engineers, but it's got these cool catwalks that run the length. Um, we also need to have space for it to be developed on the sides because you've got all these uh, little attachment points, right? I mean, there's no reason it's this size, right? Like this could just be longer. It could just be longer and we push it out that much more. So we put uh, another wheel right here. And then we could do something like this for the outside edge. <laughs> We've taken so long that the dang sun's shining through the planet. That usually means it's it's midnight on the other end. Wow, it's kind of an incredible ghost light, isn't it? So what's happening right now is that the sun is just shining like through the rock. Uh, just because the, the collisions in this game aren't the best. That's pretty that's pretty dope actually. All right, so we made it longer, which is, I think that was the right play, because now now we've got room to work. I think I want it here. Because, yeah, we can we can have the component side of things exposed. I don't mind that. And that could just run right there. That would work. That would work a treat. I love the way that looks. But the regular assembler can also go here, because that can also take modules, you see. I think it should go there. And we could probably get away with two of them. Because then we could have speed module, speed module, speed module, speed module, speed modules and yield modules all the way down. Power module on top. And then we need a connector here. 
And a good thing to connect these two points would actually be a smaller cargo container. We could, there's many other things we could use. We could use an, an O2H2 generator here to uh, connect them up. That's maybe a good place for it. We could have it like right over there. Okay, so assembler, assembler, O2 generator, refinery. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, then I think in the meantime, I'm going to just slap that little assembler back on here, the basic one, so that we can we can get it started. Just because I want it to start producing the stuff we need for these other machines. All right, cool. So that assembler needs to make this assembler. First things first. Okay, then we want the refinery running. This can probably wait. It's um, it's gonna take a hot minute to get that functional. Which means then I probably want to run uh, connectors underneath the refinery as well. Which would be sort of this block, this block, this block, and this block. Let's go digging. Connector, oh, conveyor, that's what we need. And I want to use the reinforced conveyors for this, I think. So we want a curved conveyor tube that brings resources, yeah, from that direction. And then we can just go straight underneath this one because there's no connections on the bottom of the refinery. So we don't need a T-junction. We just need a conveyor tube. Perfect. And we're going to want to go that way, that way, and then up, I suppose. Maybe we take a turn here because we need to connect... Because we need to connect to this. So we need to connect to this. So that's going to be a curved tube. And then the regular one again? Yeah. Something like that. And you know what might work well here, actually? Is to make this a T-junction. And then we can move that basic assembler from over here just into the ground. So we can just keep it on our ship. Because, like, why not, right? Just, just have it right there. Just as part of the floor. And we'll, we'll put one of the glass sides facing up so it looks interesting at least. Just give some, give some texture to the whole place. So then I want a T-junction curve. And I like to have the visible part facing up. Yeah, there we go, like that. Just because you can see if the, if, the, if the links are working or not. If the yellow light means that the connector is, connected to, is not connected to something, red light means that it's connected but not powered or is damaged, and the green light means that it is uh, connected and functional. All right, cool. We can now pop this thing apart, which should dump a whole bunch of stuff on the floor. I just want easier access to this uh, cargo container. It's going to speed this up a whole lot since we're doing all this by hand. Perfect. There we go. Okay, then we need to take a left turn and connect up with these. All right, my energy is critically low and it looks like my UI is trying to figure out what it's doing with itself. It's still not entirely sure. Welding the base is uh, still an option here, but we actually need to expand the to-do list even further. Um, I think, you know what, let's also separate this by sort of categories. So greebles are like continuous tasks. Design is sort of things we need to add to the whole process. We're definitely designing the industrial space right now. So I'm going to add that there and we'll check that off when it's done. So well, the base has some like sub components. So there's the floor. There's the wheels, right? So the wheels and the suspensions. And then of course, there's like the machines. Uh, so we got we got pretty big blocks to fill here and uh, quite a lot of time to do it in. So what I'm going to do now, I think, is I'm going to put some things into production. I'm going to continue uh, welding up wherever I can, and then I'm going to start the time lapse. And what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, as much time as it needs, you know, to get all of the components we currently got in front of us functional. Uh, we may need to, oh no, we may need to spend a bit of time working on our uh, power production as well during the time lapse, just to ensure that that uh, battery doesn't just tank. Because yeah, two wind turbines are not going to be enough to to run the whole thing. I think I might build a bunch more, so you might see a few more towers go up. But uh, yeah, it's probably also worth just waiting for the day. Uh, well, this is a good time as any. So if you are running your own world, you can hold Alt F10, and uh, you can actually adjust the time of day. As you can see, I did it there to get us a nice sunrise to start this episode. So you can move the time of day around. I mean, you can use this to cheat and always have solar power. I would advise against that. I think you remove a lot of the fun. In order to do the time lapse, I've uh, brought Magic along for the ride. Hi, Magic. Hello, hello. Hello. <laughs> Great to have you. 
that's going to be our spectator camera for this little bit. So uh, I think without further ado, Magic, go, go, Gadget, time lapse. Yeah, I was recording the whole thing. You mother... <laughs> And voila, there it is. The MCV, potentially, and also the murder wheel. Yeah, don't we don't we don't talk about the murder wheel, man. Oh, the wheel's freaking out. I see it now. Oh, you see it now. I see it now. As yeah. much as me. I think it is the dogs. It's like disconnected the from the Oh them. god! I, it's it's got smoke coming off it, I'm noticing now as well, which is it's a bit of a concern, but uh we're just gonna let that do its thing. We now need to drop this thing down. It's um it's a bit of a scary one, but we're gonna we're gonna have to grind the support off and uh, hope it doesn't explode when it lands. Just to quickly go over everything before it does blow itself up, we have a pair of assemblers, an oxygen generator over here, which is currently linking that cargo container to this refinery. That's why it's there. Uh, we have a pretty decent amount of ore stashed up. I was doing a bunch of hand mining while I was building this thing in the time lapse, and yeah, we've got. We're gonna have to do a lot more though. We don't we don't have enough to continue, which is why I built the drill arm. So this is something we spoke about in the design. It's something that I think the comment section had a really good idea with, kind of having this open space in the center. We can drive over an ore node, and then this can just push down and dig it up. This should reach to about 30 meters. So anything more than that, and we're gonna have to figure out a different solution. But honestly, that's good enough for most applications. We're not gonna need 50,000 gold. So maybe we can just do that by hand, or we can build a special machine that does it for us. The lights look really cool. Uh, hopefully we'll, we'll swing around to the nighttime soon. Here's the underneath. Uh, let me not sprint so that you could, don't have to see the conveyor tubes, but there we go. Uh, the wheels, wheels come back to us. Good, good. It all looks pretty nifty. I'm pretty happy with the way it's turned out. I think that there is a... I think that there's a fair chance that uh, we're going to encounter some bugs with the build just because of where I place the wheels. It's always a bit of a scary bit, but oh well. Let's go ahead and also drop the height offset here. I think it's negative 1.5 meters is where I want to go, just so that these wheels go all the way down. Yeah, there we go. And of course, then when we do the drilling, we can actually lift them back up so that we can get even closer and just get that tiny bit more distance out of it. All right. Well, I mean, I don't know. There's not much else for it. Here we go. Let's um, uh, let's let's pop this bad boy off and hope it doesn't break. Uh, guess I'm gonna I'll stand. I just don't want to, I don't want this thing to clip anything, so I guess we'll just stand right here and... Hey! <laughs> that could have been a lot worse, baby. <laughs> that could have been a whole lot worse. Alright, very nice. The, uh, the provisionally named MCV is on the way. MCV deployed. Yes, sir. Uh, man, Command & Conquer, we need to do a Command & Conquer playthrough. Who wants to see a Command & Conquer playthrough on this channel? That would be pretty sick. Now, the next major uh, crisis we're going to have to resolve is figuring out how the hell we're going to get that little rover on top of this larger one, but that's a problem for next time. I am fresh out of time and ideas for today, so thank you all so much for hanging out. You know, we could... I'll set up the drills and stuff off camera, and we'll, we'll do our first test drill at the start of the next episode, so if you want to see that, you guys know what to do. Hit that like button, subscribe for the next one. Uh, Break my kneecaps. Please release my family. I've paid, I've paid the tithe. I miss them so much. I will see you all in the next one. Cheers. No, you mother... Stop it.
I was trying to bury it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, brother. You made it to the end of the video. Congratulations and thank you. That puts you in the top 3% eh, of viewers. Here's another video that YouTube thinks you're going to like, and here is a list of all the patron and channel member names. If you don't see yours on there, you can find a link down in the description where you can sign up and support this content directly. Uh, if your name is on there, well, you probably already know that, huh? So, um, what are you still doing here?